Hello enemies and book lovers, my name is Ash and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be doing my January wrap up for the first month of 2023. I started off really well in January. Uh, I'm having a harder time now in February. I'm actually really struggling to read, but at least for January, I did read a good amount. So I'm going to be putting up the weighted rating system done by Covers with Cassidy or Cassidy's channel. And I'll always link her down below in my description. So I read a total of six books in January. I did DNF one at 25%. Total pages read was 2,347, at least something around then, at least. I might actually have to make sure this is accurate. And if I do change it, I'll put up the actual number here if it does change. Average page of the day is 75. I would have liked to be a bit more, but I had a few days where I didn't read at all so that's not surprising. Average page count is 391. Most read genre is fantasy. Are we surprised? No. Books with representation is only two, and then authors read from before is four. I read one 2.5 star book, one three star book, one 3.5 star book, and one 4.5 star book. It's okay reading month. I wouldn't say it was great. I also DNF'd one, so it's like... The year didn't start off amazing, but I'm hoping it'll get better as the months go on. I'm reading a lot more books I think I'll enjoy, so fingers crossed I will continue to like my books. My publication breakdown, five were backlisted. One was from 2022. I read five physical and then one ebook. I started three series. I DNF'd one, completed one, and then I read two standalones. Unfortunately, there's no DNF option on this, but I did DNF one and I'll talk about that in a moment. <laughs> in a minute. Well, three from the library and three owned. That's pretty good for me. I usually read more library than owned, so I think it's kind of good that I'm getting down my own TBR because I need to do that. Then for genre, I have two fantasy, one romance, one contemporary, one sci-fi, and one horror. So yeah, that is the breakdown for this month. And let's just get onto the books and what I feel about them. I will say something before I start. So there is one book on this list that I'm going to actually talk about at the very end. I gave it 2.5 and I'm going to talk about it at the end because I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent. I already know I am. And I'm going to do my best to be a little bit, you know, mindful that people enjoy these books and this author. And I will not hate on anyone that reads the books, just the author's choices. So I will put that to the very end so that you can just skip it if you want to. But for now, I'm going to go through my books normally and then I'll talk about that book at the end because I'm a little bit nervous to talk about it but also I'm not really someone that is afraid to talk about bad things about a book or talk negatively about a book that's not usually me but I know that on booktube and the internet is a little bit more critical if you don't like something that people enjoy so I'm gonna be a little bit careful but at the same time like I'm gonna speak my mind because I'm not someone that likes to shy away from criticism or you know salt so I'm gonna do that at the end. So until then, let's just start with our wrap up for January and get into these books finally. The first book, the first book was my DNF of the month. I gave this book a two stars and I usually don't write books unless I read more than half of it because I don't think it's very, you know, fair to the author. But this book, I couldn't. I knew, it, I just didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And I could just tell when I first started the book that I wouldn't like it, but I tried to push through and I couldn't push through it. I couldn't do it. And that is Priest by Sierra Simone. Like I said, again, it's a two stars. I DNF'd at 25%, so through the quarter way. And um, no, this is a no for me. So for me, I like erotica. I like smut, nothing against it at all. But for me, I need a emotional connection before I see them just doing things. Let me just go back and talk about what this book is about. So this book is about a priest who um, kind of comes in contact with a woman. Uh, he goes and she goes to the confessional and they're sitting next to each other and she starts talking about how she wants to confess something she's ever been to church before. And she kind of wants to like confess her sins because she feels like she did something wrong, even though she doesn't think she did, but she, whatever, she's trying to confess anyway. And it's like instantaneously he hears her voice and he starts to like already think of things. And I was just like, dude, you're a priest. What are you doing? Like, how are you a priest if you can't even control yourself just by hearing someone's voice, okay? And then like the second time she comes around, um, she leaves the confessional and he steps out to see her for the first time. There's a part in the book, literally, where he sees her eyelashes and gets like, Poop. you know what I'm saying? Like, how is this guy a priest? Why did he decide to go into a career that chooses one of the only careers that you can choose that has abstinence. Why would you do that? It's like everything he could have chose, he chose the singular thing, okay? And I know why he does it. Um, we explain why he became a priest, but like, I don't really think the reasoning made sense at all. I mean, it made sense, but it didn't make sense. It was too fast for me. The relationship was way too quick. It is in the point of view of the male love interest, which I enjoy, but the way that the male love interests are written in smut is, for, in my opinion, 
distasteful. <laughs> I think it's just so lewd. Like the moment he sees her, he just wants to like shove things into her. And a man thought like that toward me, I would be insanely disgusted, okay? So like, I just don't like how men are so overly sexualized in erotica or how they literally can't think of anything else other than like a one thing. And like, maybe there are men like that, but that, that, that just makes me lose faith in men. So I don't like that personally. <laughs> this is just a me thing. Like, I already talked about it. I'm demisexual. I like emotional connections. And this book is just not for me. Uh, it's If you like very, like, smut-heavy books that don't have really emotional, you know, stuff, then you might enjoy this. I also just didn't like the female protagonist either. I didn't like the male or female protagonist in this book. Uh, I think that a lot of people will like this, though, if they like that kind of stuff. So, like, if you're into that, try this. But it uh, was not for me. This was for the Literature Book Club pick. I've noticed that I haven't liked any of them yet. I don't know if I'm going to be taking part in any of the other clear trip book clubs but it's fun to watch the live shows anyway so yeah not for me uh, had a good time i guess N not really actually and my next book was a library lotto book which is one where i go to a library i ch have random numbers either decided by you or myself and i go to the library and i choose a book on the shelf and i read it and i know not nothing about it i don't look at goodreads i don't look at anything and i'd read it this book was interesting this is the love interest by kale dietrich this book, I actually didn't know it was LGBTQIA plus until I picked it up and I read the inside flap and it said that it was gay. And I was like, yes, I want to read a gay book. I'm here for it. So I wanted to read it. This is also written by a male author. So I thought that was really cool uh, to read a male male relationship that's written by a male author. How do I even talk about this book? This is a weird, weird book. It's a sci-fi. This is a book set in a world where these teenagers are in this organization pretty much taken, they take like children that have no homes and they will pretty much just take them for themselves and then they will raise them to be bads and the nices. So there's a one boy that's a bad and there's one that's a nice. And we're following these two characters, the bad and the nice. They're not actually called that, but that's like the title that they're giving. It's so weird. They have to pretty much have someone fall in love with them. That's really important that they think that is going to be a huge impact on the world. Supposedly this has been happening for generations and generations that they have like these spies that they raise and put into situations like the government and presidents and huge roles so that they can kind of spy on them. So they raise these kids that they can go into the world and try to have someone fall in love with them that's important. So that way they can like get information from them. It's very strange, okay? It's very strange. So they're raised in this facility and they are meant to fall in love with this girl. And so they just say, okay, you all go, both go out there, have her fall in love with one of you and whoever she does not fall in love with will be it's a really weird concept. It's kind of cool, I guess. It's not a love triangle or anything, but yeah, they're trying to have her fall in love with them. And unfortunately, instead of that, um, they end up falling in love with each other. So I gave this book a three stars and I actually thought it was pretty interesting. I think there was parts I liked. It was a bit odd at times, but I think there were a lot of things that were touched upon that I actually really enjoyed. But this book is probably one of the lowest rated books I've ever read. And I think it's actually kind of good that I read this book without knowing the rating, which is why I do Library Lotto. I just don't know anything about it. And I, maybe I'll like a book that people hate or hate a book people love. And that's kind of interesting to me, but this book is actually one that isn't hugely enjoyed by the people. I don't remember the rating. I'll put it up here. I'll show you what it looks like on Goodreads, but um, it's not a hugely popular book, but it's not too bad. And yeah, it has a lower rating, which I can see why. I looked at the reviews. I agree with what they said, but I think there are a lot of things I that are interesting in this book and I think they are important in this book. I did like some of the concepts. It made me really like think about like love triangles and books and this book kind of just made me think about it in a different way. There was, there was issues with it definitely, but I think it was still a good book, okay? It was actually not too bad. And for a book I never really heard of, it was actually pretty interesting to read. So next on the list with another three stars is A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. Um, unfortunately, I did not like this as much as A Darker Shade of Magic. Uh, like I said, I gave it a three stars. I think it was pretty cool, this book. There was a lot of cool concept within this book. This one specifically, I won't get too much into it because it is the second book in a trilogy, but this one kind of followed a tournament, which I was really excited about because I love that kind of stuff. And it's like a magical tournament. So I thought that was really cool. But the way that the tournament happened wasn't as cool as I thought it was going to be. This one kind of was just like, it was like the same game or same like kind of concept throughout the entire kind of tournament. I thought it was going to be like, trials you know i'm a sucker for trials in fantasy books what can i say there is a character that is in this book that i am tragically upset about because i love him and um he deserves better if you know you know but he, he deserves better and um, i did enjoy it like i said but i just think that it wasn't as strong as the first book and i think i've heard a lot of people say that they didn't like this one as much and i think that third book i'm hoping will pull its weight i will not be reading the next book in 
February. I think I'm gonna be reading it a little bit later in the year, which is unfortunate, but I do plan on finishing this trilogy soon. I already talked about what this is about. I'm pretty sure a lot of people do know what it's about. Parallel Londons, someone being able to traverse through them all. There's like romance, there's princes and family dynamics and stuff, you know, it's stuff. Also Lila in this book was a little bit more unlikable. I wouldn't say that she's like completely dislikable, but I didn't like her as much as I did in the first book. She kind of a little bit more got on my nerves. And if the thing that she is, like there's gonna be a twist about her character and I'm hoping it's not gonna be as predictable as I think it might be. I don't think so. I think there's gonna be something that we don't expect and I'm trying to guess what it is, but I also don't wanna guess it right. So I'm hoping I'm wrong. And um, I'm curious what's gonna happen when I read the third and final book. I'm hoping I like it more, but I still like this. It was still enjoyable. I just think that it could have been a bit stronger. Also, just want to show you the artwork of the characters. I don't know if you can see. Also, this artwork. Hello. So next on this list is Inheritance by Christopher Paolini. This is finally, finally the fourth and final book in the Inheritance Cycle. I am so happy that I'm finally finished this series. It has been a journey. It's been a journey and I've been here the entire time with you talking about it. And how do I feel about this book? So this is a three and a half stars. I think I rounded it down to a three which is a little bit unfortunate in my opinion. Um, there's a few reasons as to why, but I'm not gonna go too much into depth about it. Like I said, this is the final book in the Inheritance Cycle. It's like a dragon rider, huge epic fantasy kind of book series that it's written for like mostly YA. Uh, this book, the, the last two books I would say feel more mature than the first two books. And I did enjoy the third book the most. I did not enjoy the first two very much. And this one I didn't love either. I think the reason why I didn't love this one as much as I thought I was going to is because the ending, which I hear often by a lot of people, the ending is just a little bit lackluster. I expected it to be like this huge, grand, you know, like amazing epic battle or like this epic fight between the big bad villain. And I don't want to get too into spoilers or anything, but it was not the way I predicted it was going to be. I thought it was gonna be something different. And unfortunately it kind of was just like too easy, I guess you can say. I'm not gonna say spoilers, but this might hint to one for the ending. So just be wary if you want to read this book, but I expected like a huge dragon fight at the end of this book because, you know, there is an evil dragon, but it seems to be kind of just brushed over. Like there is no huge fight with the dragons. And I think that the dragon fighting in this series is one of my favorite parts of it. It's really, really well done, really well written. And I think Christopher Paolini is really good at writing fighting scenes in general, but it's just like, it feels like at the end, it was kind of more rushed, which is very unfortunate because this series is just like really like, this is a big book. This is over 800 pages. So I expected it to be, you know, more interesting, but it wasn't. It's okay. I think there's still a lot of cool scenes in this book. And I honestly think that this is one of the best dragon series I've ever read. I haven't, I haven't read many to be fair, but I think that this does it really well. I think that the whole dragon concept is really placed in the forefront, which you don't see very often in dragon books. Usually dragons are like in the background, but this one actually has dragons constantly on page for the most part and i really loved the relationship between riders and dragons in this book it was really beautiful like i said love it for a dragon series i hope i can read really good dragon series in the future but um i think that the ending of this could have been a bit better and i think that it was just too long for what it was i think it could have been a bit shorter or could have put all that length into the end okay but still i really enjoyed it and i am happy that i got to read this series and i finally finished it i love finishing series and it was so satisfying satisfying to get to the end the next book is going to be the alloy of law by brandon sanderson this is the first book in mistborn era 2. um this book was is something that i hear a lot of people saying that they don't like this book i think a lot of people don't like the western uh, steampunky themes to it i think that people just don't like the guns and everything like that in my opinion i didn't mind that i actually kind of liked it it was pretty cool in my opinion. I gave this a four and a half stars. Like I said, I think I rounded it down to a four because I could have liked it a bit more. Like five stars for me is like the best thing I've ever read. So this definitely wasn't a five stars for me, but I really, really enjoyed it. I think the reason why I enjoyed this book is because it gives me like Red Dead Redemption vibes. And I played the first game and the second game. I haven't completed either of them because I'm so bad at finishing my video games. It's embarrassing how bad I am at finishing games, but we're not going to get into that either. We're just going to talk about the fact that it gives me very much like Red Dead Redemption vibes. And I think that kind of helped me with this book because I love that game. And this is like Red Dead Redemption with steampunk added into it with an allomancy and magic. And it's just like so cool. I think it was awesome. I think that the fight scenes were so well done, like on top of the trains and everything. Like that's so cool to me. So I thought this was really cool. Like I said, 4.5 stars. Definitely, I don't enjoy it as much as Era 1. Era 1 
will be in my heart forever and I don't think anything will ever top that. So this didn't top era one, but I still think it's really well done. And this is 300 years after the first era and this follows kind of what happens after at the end of the last book and like kind of like civilization is more advanced and there's more technology. There's not much of a clear idea of what's happening in it. We're just kind of just following these characters and seeing where they lead us. And I think that as the series goes on, I will know what Gonna, what's happening like what's happening i don't know but we're just here for the ride and i'm excited to see where it goes so next is death of sleep this is a the first book in the graphic novel comic i read this and i was expecting not to enjoy it because uh, i saw another like huge booktuber say that they hated this book and i actually quite liked it i thought it was really really good obviously i don't rate my graphic novels or comics or manga but this one was still really enjoyable if i did rate it maybe like of four stars it was just like a really fun time it doesn't really go based off of the video game it kind of goes in its own direction um we are following the hunter who is like the main protagonist of the bloodborne game it's a little bit like i said different than the actual video game itself we're kind of following a different path and i think this one ends and then the next books follow completely different stories because this one ended in a way that i'm like there's no coming back from that. There's no coming back from it. And I thought it was actually a pretty cool ending. If you don't know what Bloodborne is, it's a video game that is very much like, it's HP Lovecraft inspired. It's like Lovecraftian horror, cosmic horror, which is such a cool, I wish that those were more horror based off of cosmic horror. It's amazing, the genre. And it's about a hunter who you play as and they wake up in a world where it's pretty much like a nightmare. Um, and you have to d destroy and kill beasts and you don't really know why you're doing it you're just a hunter that's what you're meant to do and so you go out in this world and you just kill all these beasts and you kind of as a person kind of consider like why am i doing this like why what's happening what's going on and as you play and you read descriptions of the different characters and the different items you kind of discover what the world's about and it's like a masterpiece. The video game is one of my favorite games of all time. I'm going on a tangent now. Shoot, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Hopefully I'll enjoy more of the comics as I go. But yeah, that's all I'm going to talk about with this one. I talk too much about it. I'm sorry. I just love Bulletborn. Moving on. All right, so we are on to our last book, the one that I wanted to talk a little bit more in depth about. And if you are someone that is, how do I say this? If you're someone that's sensitive to certain authors um, and you don't want me to talk badly about this author, you might either just want to click away or just like take this with a grain of salt. I am not attacking the readers of this book or these books. I'm not attacking the audience. I'm kind of just talking about what I feel about the author and the contents, I guess, of these books. We're going to be talking about Colleen Hoover. So if you love Colleen Hoover's books, uh, I would just say, like I said, don't take this personal or just don't watch this. You can just end the video here. I appreciate you being here. But um, yeah, I'm going to be talking about Colleen Hoover and it starts with us, which is like what I read in the month of January. I gave this book a two and a half stars. So I didn't think this book was horrible. I didn't think it was badly written. It was very similar to the first book in regards to the writing. Um, so I'm going to talk about the book itself and then talk about other things afterward. But the first thing I want to talk about for this book is that it was 100%, 100% pointless. It was pointless. And the author's note in the very very beginning of the book i think i might have taken a photo of it literally says that this was like a thank you to the tiktokers that made the first book so insanely popular which i find so funny because this is literally and i'm sorry for saying it literally a money grab um 100 a money grab because colleen hoover knows that it ends with us was so popular and i think that tiktok made it so big that she pretty much wanted to make a second book to monetize off of it not saying to not get your money, but she is already getting so much money. She's probably a billionaire at this point because she sold millions of copies last year. And I honestly don't really see the point in this. I mean, if you are really doing it for your fans, that's great. But this book was really pointless. It had so many random things pushed into it because it was like, there was not enough context for it to be a full on book. So there was like random conflict thrown into it. I do want to preface one thing. If you are a, if you are a huge Atlas and Lily fan, you would love this book, I think. You would enjoy it at least. I didn't like it because I don't love Atlas <laughs> as a person. So like, I maybe that's my own problem, but I don't love Atlas. So I think that the reason why I didn't enjoy it as much is probably because of that. When it comes to the book, that's all really I have to say about it. I do want to get more into a little bit of spoilers and more in depth about it. So when it comes to this book, I'm going to talk about a few things that are spoilers. So if you don't want to know about the first book and this book, please don't watch this part. I'll have a spoiler warning in my timestamps and then stop the spoiler warning and then continue on when it comes to this book the two things i think that i really want to discuss um first i'm going to talk about lily and atlas i talk about it in my colleen hoover reading vlog of when i read it ends with us i have a whole vlog about it but pretty much what i did not like was like i said this is spoilers just letting you know they didn't like about the first book is that 
In the state that these characters are in, 16 years old is the age of consent, so you can sleep with someone at the age of 16 because it is, I'm pretty sure, I looked it up, and it is, it is legal. So 16 is a legal age, but I have a problem still. So Lily was 15 years old and Atlas was 18 years old when they became like a thing, okay? She was helping him, like literally she saw him that he was homeless, she went to him, she helped him, she like gave him a place to like, you know, shower and she gave him blankets and she was very, very, very kind to him and I actually liked that. Um, but I think the problem was that they had a relationship at the same time. Um, they were like kissing and like heavy petting and like there was a huge amount of like sexual tension and she was 15 years old. And like, like I said, they were like making out and like, it's really icky to me. It still is icky to me. He literally left to go like to the military or something and then came back on her birthday when she just turned freshly 16 and slept with her. And I think that's kind of gross in my opinion. Like I still think it's gross. And like, if that was my daughter, um, I'd be so upset <laughs> if a 15 year old, 18 year old, like, no. And the reason why I'm bringing this up again is because it, in this book, um, it feels like Colin Hoover is trying to justify it. Like multiple times it's mentioned, the whole age thing is mentioned. I think at least two or three times it was mentioned. And there was even one point where he says to her that, like you were so mature for your age um, because she was like 15. And like, I hate when people say that because it's like a term that like predators use on younger, younger boys and younger girls are said sometimes like you're so mature for your age. Um, doesn't mean that they're not still underage. Like it doesn't change the fact that they're underage. Yeah, she went through so much in her childhood because of her father that she's a bit more mature. And I was mature for my age as a child too. But like that doesn't mean it's okay, you know, just because she's still 15 and 16. Like it doesn't matter if she's mature. It's weird, like, I don't know. I still can't like him because of that. And it's just like constantly trying to be justified in this book. And I just didn't like that. The next thing I want to talk about is Ryle. Ryle does not have enough ramifications for what he did and I'm really upset about it. There are a lot of younger girls like 13, 12, 14 year olds reading this book which also kind of goes into the other point like there's girls that are 15 years old reading this book and probably thinking it's okay to be with the 18 year old thing is fine now but in this book Ryle has no ramifications for what he went through and I think that younger girls have to realize that if a man is doing what he does that Ryle did or even like even lesser things, you should contact someone, okay? Ryle does not get in trouble at all. Uh, Lily says in the first book that the reason why she doesn't want to go to the authorities when it comes to Ryle is because he doesn't want to, she doesn't want to ruin his career because he's a surgeon and he puts so much time into it and it's like his pride and joy and it's like his entire income and she didn't want to ruin it for him, which I find frustrating. And then in the second book, instead of going to authorities again or anything like that, they pretty much do like an intervention and say to him that he should go and get some help for it and that's great but like it just really gets me annoyed because in the second book he does really pushes lily against like the door and it's just like kind of scary like her daughter is there and he she's saying that you can't take my daughter with you and he like gets upset and like pushes her against the wall like he controlled his emotions because he was like he didn't actually hurt her but i'm like are you freaking kidding me like he doesn't get any ramifications he should be in jail he should have at least domestic abuse on his like record because he can do this to another woman and i think that this is problematic people are going to be children are reading this book literal teenagers preteens are reading this book and they're looking at something where they don't go to authorities and they're just leaving the men which is great and i think that it kind of just has a bad image on this thing like i think ryle needs to go to jail okay and if you never read the first two books the reason why i feel like this is because a he pushes her down a flight of stairs um he tries to assault her like force himself on her when he's drunk um he almost does actually but then i think she like manages to get him off um he bites her so hard that she gets stitches those are the most of the things that he does but yeah she does not go to authorities with this and i think that colleen hoover if she wants to actually use these books as a teaching tool which she isn't but she did use these as a teaching tool she should have wrote that she went to authorities and he got at least kind of assault on his record at least because she needs to protect other women as well as herself um, i'm not going to vic victim blame at all i'm not trying to say that at all but i think that like as an author she wrote this character she should have did that okay i'm just saying that's how it should have went and it makes me mad that ryle has like hardly any issues the only thing that really kind of like happens is that he doesn't get like full custody of his daughter and he can't see her unsupervised which is like the bare minimum at this point anyway Moving on from this book, we're going to be talking about the author herself, Colleen Hoover. Now, I had Verity on hold at my library. I actually had it on the shelf. I waited like three months for it and I had it on my waiting, uh, my hold shelf at the library waiting for me. The day I saw it on the hold shelf and I was going to get it, 
Colin Hoover decided to put out a coloring book. And I'm pretty sure some of you probably know about this. And oh boy, did it leave a bad taste in my mouth as well as a lot of other people's. This book is about domestic violence, okay? And putting a coloring book for adults about a book about domestic violence is so tasteless. And it just made me realize like, I know Colin Hoover is problematic, but like seeing that kind of just really push it into my face a bit more because I thought she kind of like learned but she didn't, I guess. She did stop doing it, like she did recall it or whatever, but that doesn't matter, doesn't matter. You still thought this was okay. Um, you're using the clout and popularity of your one of your most popular books and you are making a coloring book out of it because you know you'll be able to sell it and you know that people will buy it. And thankfully, a lot of people did not buy into that because they knew how much of an issue it was. And the only reason why they took it off is because people complained about it so much and um, they would have definitely done it if no one really talked about it. If she wants to educate people about abuse, I think she should be talking more about it instead of just like pushing out these books that are toxic and whatever. Um, I don't know, but that was really, really distasteful. And I realize I'm not gonna read anything from her, from her from now on. If you do, that's f completely fine. It's just like my own opinion, obviously. Like you can do whatever you want. I think there's no real authors I think should be read from. It's like art from artist you can separate it depending on what they do. One author I do not talk about, I will never ever advocate for, I will never buy things from anymore. Um, you might know who she is. Uh, she's very popular and I don't wanna talk about her, but I will never talk about her on my channel ever. She's the only author I will never touch from, like ever. And I think Colin Hoover is another one. She doesn't do as badly as what the other author did, but I just don't like what she's done in my own morals. I don't want to support that. There's a bunch of authors I just plan on only getting library books from from now on because I know what they've done. So yeah, that's just for me. Obviously, if you like her books, that's fine. Um, if you wanna know what other things she's done, or some of her books are just horrible. Uh, it Ends With Us isn't that bad. I actually, I did enjoy the book. I'll be honest with you, I did enjoy it. But she also has books like November 9, which I heard about that book. I didn't know, realize how bad her books were until I heard about November 9. And if you don't know what November 9 is, whew, there's a lot of people that do a lot of amazing videos on it. I actually might link some videos in my like, uh, thing up there. I'll try to link them somewhere in the description or up in my uh, pinned thing. I don't know. I'm gonna get into a, a, like a short spoiler as to why. Uh, there's a character who uh, her house is like burned with burned down or something like that and it catches on fire and she gets horrible scars all over her. I don't know if it's like all over her body or just her arms but I know that she gets really heavily scarred and then this guy comes into her life and is like creepily obsessed with her and like interested in her and he's very controlling of her and he's like obsessed with her scars and then you find out that like he's literally infatuated with her scars. And then we find out that he's the one that lights the house on fire. And then she leaves him. And at the very end of the book, she's like crying and saying sorry to him that she left him, even though he's the one that literally scarred her entire body and made her like, it's just so creepy. The abuse in this, like some of her books with abuse is terrifyingly, it definitely does romanticize abuse. And I think that certain books don't, but there are definitely ones that do. And I just think it's distasteful. And there's young girls reading these books and it terrifies me. <laughs> if I ever have a child one day, I hope they do not read Colleen Hoover. And that's all I wanna say about that. She has a voice to kind of talk about it. And she's so like advocating for abuse and how she experienced it and how her mom experienced it and how like, that's why she reads, she writes about it. But you're writing it in a way that is not healthy. And I think that the best thing you can do if you wanna advocate for abuse is to not write about romantic things within abuse. I think the best thing to do is to talk about it and educate your audience. I think that she should have videos on TikTok cause she loves TikTok. Um, I think she should go on TikTok and do videos about education on abuse. And it's just, it just, it just creeps me out that she'll monetize abuse and she'll write about it and make money off of it, but she will not help educate, at least from what I know, I don't know, maybe she does this, but she should make videos on like education of it and not make it like a fun romantic thing in the background. I just don't think I'm going to read from Colin Hoover ever again. There's a lot of cool people in booktube that like Colin Hoover still, like I, there's a few that's coming up in my head right now that I like love her books and I'm not going to hate you for it. I'm not going to say that you're a bad person. If you continue to like her books, that's fine. Also like a lot of adults like her books and I think that they can kind of separate, you know, like abuse and stuff like that. They can separate those things. So I think that it's a lot, I think it's a lot better when adults can kind of notice those things. I think when teenagers read this, they might not be able to do that right away. So I'm nothing against you if you like her books. Please don't think I'm attacking you, criticizing the author and what the things that she's done, things that she's written. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna stop talking about it now. Um, I don't want to ramble for another half hour about it. But that's the reason why I'm not going to be reading her books anymore. And I think that it is something that is good to do for myself because I don't want to kind of support an author like that or the things that she writes. Um, like I said, there's a lot of authors like that. I read Sergey Mastil, I love her books. She's done problematic things. Uh, Jay Kristoff, I used to like love him as an author, but 
I don't love him as an author anymore, but I do like his books still. I'm gonna be careful of what, who I read from and make sure I tell you that these authors have done things are, you know, problematic before I talk about the books. Yeah, um, I'm sure some people just don't care about this and they skipped it and that's fine. Um, I'm hoping this doesn't hurt anyone's feelings, but I'm just trying to say like, this is something I want to do and I just want to talk about it. And yeah, uh, that's about it, I think, because I talked it long enough and I need to eat something because it's 1 p.m. and I haven't eaten yet and I'm hungry. So if you watched for this long uh, and you don't really have anything to comment after all that stuff, <laughs> you can put a dragon emoji in the comments below for Safira. I mean, there's no blue dragon, but there are green dragons. So I guess that works. I hope I didn't hurt anyone's feelings. I apologize if I did. Like I said, nothing against you. Keep reading the books if you want to. I do not have any like negative feelings toward you for that. I really, really don't. I'm probably gonna get a few dislikes on this video, but that's all right. Uh, I expect it and people can feel like that if they want to. That's completely valid. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great reading month in January. I hope you have an amazing reading month in February and I can't wait to see you all soon. If you decide to come back on my channel after that, we'll see. So with that, I hope to see you all soon and goodbye everyone.